It's land once fought over by lords and kings. Streets walked by George Washington to William H. Butler, the first African American in Maryland elected to public office. Annapolis is an architectural monument to the colonial days of American history. But Annapolis is also a living, breathing, modern day city, home to a thriving culinary scene, arts and entertainment. A town where the streets aren't just conduits from point A to point B, they encourage people to linger, to socialize, and truly experience its unique culture. A town that's managed that delicate balance of preserving the past while embracing change. Until now. There's a tsunami blowing into Annapolis, but this one has nothing to do with the weather. While some people are expressing their disapproval of an artistic expression in downtown Annapolis, there's a mural that features the face of Buddha and a screaming nurse from a Russian film. Gavin Buckley has it on the side of his establishment, and he says the West Street location is important, so a mural had to be out of this world. It needed to be a real kind of cerebral piece, I guess, you know, something that made people stop and think. The city's historic preservation commission will have the final say as to whether or not the mural will go or stay. Hey, I'm Gavin, this is planning and zoning. Could you please uh, call me at 410-263? We thought those chickens ruffled some feathers, but this thing is way worse. Six <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Gavin Buckley is an arts lover with a twist. He saw politicians battling over allowing chickens in city limits. We watched this happen and we thought this is a great opportunity for us to start a public art project. So Gavin made light of the drama, helping install six foot tall artistic chickens in the arts district. When Annapolis cited his restaurant for peeling paint, you can imagine what he and co-owner Jody Danik did next. As far as we know, there's no laws or codes that dictate um, colors for paint or um, what can be painted on your building. I came up with the idea of doing one of my um, pieces that I've been working on and it's been evolving and I call it agony and ecstasy together in perfect harmony. Combining a black and white portrait of an injured nurse from the movie The Battleship Potemkin with a colorful Buddha, world-renowned artist Jeff Huntington went to work. The building got painted, Annapolis got art. Then the Annapolis Historic Preservation Commission, or HPC, got involved. On the face of the law, the HPC does not have jurisdiction. There's a history in the city of not regulating paint and certainly not regulating art. The HPC, to this date, has never taken jurisdiction over painting directly on a building facade. The reason? Annapolis does not have a master plan for arts. Cities big and small across this country recognize the economic and cultural benefits of art in public places. From the iconic Love in Philadelphia, The Bull on Wall Street, Awakening at the National Harbor, to a guided tour of the Metropolitan Museum of Art for NYPD officers, teaching them lessons in observation and thinking outside the box. Spartanburg, South Carolina, Population, 38,000, same size as Annapolis, where the city council just approved $1 million in public art projects funded by Bloomberg Philanthropies. Neighborhoods and civic leaders came together to reach a vision for the nine art displays tailored to their specific environments. Erwin Reddle plans to use fabric and light to turn this old smokestack on Spartanburg's north side into a beacon of hope for the future. He is the artist working to help you see Spartanburg in a new light, a project made possible by a $1 million grant from Bloomberg Philanthropies. The ideas go beyond the city, but then you work with the people in the city to realize those ideas. Reddell came up with these works of art with the help of the people living in the neighborhoods getting them. They get engaged and, and I can ensure, you know, assure that those sites will not be, you know, like covered with graffiti or like they, they will, crime by default only happens if people are not engaged. The police chief says he's excited to have art as a crime fighting tool. We're not closed minded and, you know, this is 21st century law enforcement. Whether it's the performing arts, dance, mixed medium, experts have found public art plays a crucial role in people developing an attachment to a place. 
It's also a catalyst for community pride and economic growth. I think it's great. I see greatness. I see something artistic. I see something that I like to see in Annapolis. I agree. You know what? It gives a character. I like it. I like it. I think it gives a lot of character to the uh, to Annapolis. I think that it causes conversation. What's wrong with it? Maybe we should talk about it. Without that master plan for arts, this public display on West Street, it's okay. But this isn't. Same artist, same owners, same exterior mural-like painting just four blocks apart. Why? Well, this HPC map. This clearly defines what land the city deems as historic, while ironically overlapping with part of the Annapolis Arts and Entertainment District, leading some to question if the map is simply too big to accommodate art in public places. The, the Historic Preservation District is a real jewel here in Annapolis. It's, it's very rare. There aren't many places that we have 17th century buildings still used day to day. How they are being protected, though, much like art, is in the eye of the beholder. The geese on Charles Street are art. The farmer's market, shaping a city, even wings and sails, which is directly behind City Hall, all approved historic preservation district public art. I think that if it was a crab cake or a, or a sailboat, or a, I wonder if this conversation would even be happening, but... Jeff Huntington's agony and ecstasy mural remains, at least until legislation is passed, giving the HPC jurisdiction over paint in the city code. But clearly, paint can be art. Reasonable minds can disagree. The real question is, does this change the structure of the, the building and what folks see as they go through that part of the historic district? The Art in Public Places Commission is a panel created by the Annapolis City Council to bring stakeholders to the table. Its mission is to encourage exploration of the city's 300-year history of art and culture. Called the Athens of America back in colonial times, their question now, what vision of art in public places do you have for the future of Annapolis? Preserving the historic character of the community is of vital importance, but we also have to remember that We've got an obligation to add to that legacy as well. We have a wonderful community here and have for a long time because of the commercial and cultural efforts of those who came before us. If you will, these are the shoulders of the giants on which we stand. And while we've got an obligation to acknowledge those giants, we also have an obligation to contribute in our own way so that the next generation can stand on our shoulders. We don't have a problem of a proliferation of art in this town. It's just so stodgy, you know? I mean, they need to, and if you're gonna bring people downtown, right, to shop, eat, drink, there needs to be a little bit more personality. Do we really want government controlling the color of our buildings and the content of artistic expression that might be put? It's kind of a bit of a strange thing um, how art is sort of perceived and treated uh, in Annapolis.